Good day everyone, this is Maggie B for Apps for iPads and we are now in our second video of three in our photo transfer app review for this Friday's edition of Tips and Tricks. In the first video you saw me select three photographs on my iPad in the photo transfer app application and if you recall it had you uh, note a URL that you were to type into a browser on the same Wi-Fi network as your iPad. I do want to point this out. It does say here, please do not bookmark this address. Always use the address that appears on your device to access this page. Very good advice because we had a little hiccup in our wireless network and it did give me a new URL to type in and it is just one number off than the other URL but that makes every difference in the world. I'm also going to, if you please read the entire article, there's a couple other hints that I have given, uh, tips that will make this work seamlessly for you because I will freely admit I made a couple little small errors and once I talked to the developers I was like slap my forehead because yes that's what I did and uh, it works seamlessly if you do it right. So anyhow, I, will, I am sharing those little tips with you in the written article. So make sure that you do read the entire article. Anyhow, now we are on the web browser. I do have the right URL in here that is syncing me with my iPad through the photo transfer app. And as you can see, here's my three images that it has transferred. It actually hasn't transferred them yet. They are ready and waiting for me to do with whatever I would like to do with them. I do want to point out that I have uh, used both JPEG and PNG photos just so that I can show you it does work in different formats. I can download all the photos as a zip file or I can look at the photos individually. If I click on download all the photos as a zip file, you hear the bell, that means that it's preparing it on my iPad and I can now save it onto my um, hard drive, on a thumb drive, however I would like to so that I can work with these pictures in the future. Okay, I can also look at them individually and when I do so, I have no idea why is it, there we go. <laughs> why I wanted to show them all highlighted. If I right click on them, I can also save these. To my hard drive. Okay. And work with them that way. I also can also, um, remember you can use Jing or whatever as a photo capture and you can work with them in that way. So you have lots of different things that you can do with these. So then they are on your hard drive, a thumb drive, whatever, so that you have access to them on your computer. Anyhow, I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to show you that in the reverse you can also upload photos from your computer uh, to any iOS device you happen to own. You can also upload videos. Now, as this hint will show you, uh, you do need to have your movie in an MOV format to upload to the iPad. But I have selected one so that we can do just that. We're going to pick one that's just a second over a minute so I can show you how quickly it will upload this to my iPad. You're watching this in real time so you can see that the progress is very, very quick. We're almost at a halfway point. And once it has uploaded to the iPad, you're going to find these in the Apple photo app that we were using in the last, um, there we go, there's the bell. That's how fast it uploaded a full minute's worth of video. It is now in the Apple photo app application, as I was just saying, and you can find it there. And if you stay with us for the third video, I'm going to show you exactly what to look for, where to look for it, and how well it worked onto the iPad. So this is Maggie B for Apps for iPads. I'll see you on the website. Watch that third video, and we'll sync with you soon.